So and this might be a way in which the government is creating this unemployment. This past week, any conversation that has lasted more than 10 minutes has always arrived at the topic of how no one wants to work. So in this video, I want to look at the evidence there is for people not working. And then I wanna look at the culprit everyone keeps blaming, unemployment insurance. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to propose a solution that could help us get through this issue. Hi, my name is Craig, welcome to Mark power be sure to subscribe and it's time for some hashtag nominal talk it's like hashtag real talk except it's a bit inflated the labor shortage has been coming up everywhere like i said it's in the conversations i'm having with friends and family i'm seeing it every day in the newspaper and i'm even seeing it on twitter in fact this video was inspired by an exchange i had on twitter with fellow youtuber primer and since i took the time to write up a big long reply to his tweet i decided i should just turn that into into a video for you. Let me start with the most staggering statistic that I have seen in this discussion, and that is that we are still 10 million jobs short of pre-pandemic trends. This graph just blows me away to see this gap. There are clearly people who were working before the pandemic who are not working now. And the question is, what's causing this gap? Now, a lot of people I talk to are blaming unemployment insurance. I'm gonna get to that, but I wanna start with the things that are not unemployment insurance. What else could be causing this? And then let's dive into the UI, which is short for unemployment insurance. So the first thing that we need to consider is any sort of pandemic related cause mainly the health causes. And this is a legitimate reason why some places haven't opened up yet. Yes, conditions in the US are improving, but they're not all the way better. And there are two reasons why this affects employment. First, people might not be willing to put themselves in a situation where they're at risk of contracting the virus. Along this line, a lot of jobs are requiring a lot more onerous protocols for sanitation, and workers might not be excited to be involved in that. And they might be waiting out the pandemic to make sure that they don't have to go through those issues or put themselves at risk. And on the other hand, businesses might be worried about this too because you know, we're finishing off a second wave and hopefully it's the end, but there might be a third wave coming and it's difficult for businesses to gear up and then to be put in the position of shutting down again with a third wave or being the source of a major super spreader event. So because of the pandemic, we might not see people applying for jobs or jobs created or available. Similarly, this isn't pandemic status quo, but the pandemic over the last year, a lot of businesses were wiped out due to the pandemic. And this is really important because that means those jobs were lost. That was a major point of discussion at the beginning of the pandemic, letting people know, hey, when these businesses disappear, the jobs disappear with them. And that causes problems with trying to get people back into employment. Now, hypothetically, new businesses can start up and hire the people who used to work for those companies. But there's a lot of relationship capital, a lot of these things where you just need to be matched to the right place. This matching process actually is going to be important later on when we're talking about unemployment insurance. But let's keep talking about the another reason why we might not see the jobs recovering and that could be childcare. There are a lot of schools that are still shut down and so parents need to be home with their kids. Now, if you're in a situation where you can work remotely like myself, taking care of the kids can be burdensome, but at the same time is at least manageable. But a lot of people might be in careers where they can't work out that situation between their employer and their family responsibilities. Another good piece of evidence for this is seeing how the labor force participation rate of mothers with young children has declined the most. The most likely explanation for this is that they have young children that they need to be taken care of, and so they just drop out of the labor force entirely. And of course that's going on, but there's another trend that can't be explained that by that. And that is the low labor force participation rate of men without children. Why has that dropped so much? So let's get to the issue of unemployment insurance. Now, what has happened with unemployment insurance since the pandemic has started? Unemployment insurance has been kind of an uncelebrated hero of the American response to the pandemic. Most people are familiar with the stimulus check. These stimulus checks helped out a lot. We're seeing incomes are higher. We're seeing credit card debt is going down. We're seeing lots of pretty good things happening as a result of getting this money out to people when it was most needed, and that was when the economy was shutting down. But a lot of people would say like, oh, you know, with everything going on, we only received this small little check 
And how is that supposed to make a much of a difference? Well, that's really showing us how these people are speaking from a very privileged position because we actually gave out a ton of unemployment insurance. The federal government stepped in and added on top of state unemployment insurance an extra little bit of benefit. At the beginning, it was $400 a week, and then at the end, it, now it's $300 a week. But this has been a major boost, trying to restore up to 85%, and for some people, more than 100% of their wages during their employment. This has been a huge help to get families through this pandemic, even though they've lost a job. In fact, it's because of this unemployment insurance that the US has had the most generous fiscal response to the pandemic. So that's been one of the major good things about unemployment insurance. There are some bad things that I will get to, but I wanna highlight a few of the other good things first. Another good reason generally for unemployment insurance is that it helps improve the match quality of unemployed workers to a firm. One of the things you don't want is Anna in Frozen for jobs. Remember how Anna has been locked behind the gates of Arendelle for so long, she gets out and she falls in love with the first man she meets. Wait. You got engaged to someone you just met that day? Yeah, anyway. She doesn't take the time to get to know him and only a little bit later she realizes that he's this evil man. She then takes more time to get to know Kristoff and by the end of Frozen 2, Kristoff and Anna are engaged. Similarly, you don't want workers who are so desperate to find a job that they just go for the first one available. You wanna make sure that workers find good jobs, that there are good matches, and this is good for firms too. Firms don't want the best workers being picked off by firms that aren't as good for them. They want an opportunity to compete for them. So unemployment insurance relieves this constraint. There's a liquidity constraint, we call it. That is, the longer you're unemployed, the more you're draining down your savings. So as we make unemployment insurance better, we can actually make sure that people get better jobs. Another benefit that people pointed out is the bargaining power that this gives workers. This is similar to that match quality benefit. It's a little bit different though. What it says is, I wanna make sure that I get a good wage. And it's not just getting to the right firm, it could be the right firm, but making sure that I'm getting paid well enough. And so it's giving workers a bargaining position that says, I'm not gonna come out to work until I hit a reservation wage. And this is going to benefit workers coming forward because you might have workers who were desperate to find a job and firms were able to come in and offer them super low wages instead, these firms have to offer a high enough wage to get people out of unemployment and into their jobs. But this also gets into one of the first bad things that this creates, and that is that this bargaining position is being artificially propped up by the government. This is not a natural bargaining position, right? Natural bargaining positions come from the fact that I have a job or I have multiple opportunities and I'm trying to decide which one I want to take. And I use that competition to get a better wage at one of these firms. When the government is artificially propping up that bargaining power, I worry about the long run consequences. One, that bargaining power is going to go away at some point. Right now, these unemployment insurance benefits are going to disappear uh, at Labor Day in September. But also, you know, we're imposing a lot of costs on firms, firms that would be happy to hire people at regular wages, but now the government is effectively forcing them to pay higher wages. And this might be a way in which the government is creating this unemployment by forcing up wages that would normally be at a a regular level. Of course, some people say like, hey, the government should always be doing that. This isn't where I'm gonna have that discussion. I'm just saying that I, I'm worried about this artificial propping up of bargaining power. I'm also worried about another issue, and this is the issue that everybody talks about when I discuss this with them, and that is the moral hazard issue. Moral hazard means that when you insure something, you change people's behavior. When you decrease the cost of risk, people increase their risk. When you insure people against being unemployed, you might create greater unemployment. And some evidence we have for this is that these unemployment benefits are giving about 
50% of people who are unemployed higher wages than they had before they were unemployed. Why get a job today if I'm going to be losing out on hundreds or thousands of dollars that I could be collecting if I stay unemployed? This actually gets us to a possible solution for this, and that is to offer hiring bonuses. This means you basically give them the rest of their unemployment insurance as a lump sum cash transfer now if they get a job. That way, they're not losing out on any benefits while they're also making sure they get out and get a job. And this is important because without jobs, without these people out there working, their recovery is going to be hindered. We want the economy running at full blast and we can't have it running as effectively as possible if people are sitting out of the labor force or sitting out of perfectly good jobs. Before I end this video, I wanna promote this video where I paid Star Wars fans to miss Star Wars in theaters to go watch Cats instead. It is so good, it is the most underrated video on this channel. If you're interested in covering more of these current event type topics, let me know in the comments below. We could do a hashtag nominal talk some other time.